Hello and God bless you and thank you so much for joining. I'm really, really, really excited about going into 2024 today. And I'm really excited too about giving this little, my thoughts for the day. And if I had a title for this, I would call it Trading Up. It's like climbing a staircase. You know, when you climb a stair, stair you take one step at a time. Unless you're a kid, you want to run up and then slide down, as I used to. Or when you get out top, you want to take the elevator down and then go up again on the escalators. So this is going to be a teaching about how to better yourself going into 2024. And th these are th my thoughts about what am I going to do now to change my life in 2024. Because I don't know about you, but for me, I basically reflect a lot during this time about my life in the past and what do I want for my future. And I set goals too, and I write things down. And it's very important to write things down because it's basically gives you clarity on what you want to accomplish. It's like take a map. If I want to go from Virginia to New York, I'll use a map or I use a GPS to take me there. I just don't just randomly drive and hoping that not knowing where I'm going to get. You have to have clarity to know where you're going in life. And that's what it's all about. If you want to improve your life, you have to know what do I want to improve? Maybe it's the way I dress. Maybe it's where I live. Maybe it's what I drive. Maybe it's I want a better job that will give me a better life more money so you need clarity and that's what trading up is all about improving stepping forward and making better make yourself better and making other betters by you being better in luke chapter 6 verse 38 and here's the step of the all steps that you can take that i can take too give and it shall be given unto you and unto me Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you met with all, it shall be measured to you again. So you want more? Give more. If you don't like what you're receiving, guess what? Look at what you're giving. If you don't like your relationships in life, what are you giving to those relationships? What am I giving to those relationships? What am I giving to you now? I always have to ask, what can I do for others? And whatever I give, I always get back, I always get back more than what I gave. So don't be selfish. Don't be selfish. Be, be sharing, be giving, be loving. That's part of loving, you know, giving. Why do you marry? Because basically, you have someone to share with. It's just not you, it's you and her. When we plant a seed, I just don't plant a seed to get another seed. I plant a seed because like a year, one year seed of corn will produce like three, four or more ears of corn. And out of that year is the you know, multiple seeds. So I want a heavy return when I go through the effort of planting. And it's the same way with giving. If you're going to give, expect God to give you back. Why? Because you have more to give. And the more you give, the more you receive. The more you receive, the more you give. It's a cycle, folks. It's a cycle. That's why I say it said it's trading up. Life is a cycle. I know what it is to be poor. I know what it is to be rich. And it's a lot better being rich than it is being poor. Oh, be so humble. No, be so grateful that God bless you so you have more to give. A poor man can't give that much. It's the people who got money that are giving to help the charities, the orphans, the people in need. Think about that one. You plant a seed, reap a harvest. Matthew 6, 33, God tells us, but seek ye first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything you need. You shall have. 
no worries, folks. You give, you give out of your necessity, don't worry about it. God's going to bless you with more. I'm now going through my closet, clearing that out. Going to be giving to charity. Why? Oh, why not? Because I, I've accumulated enough that I, I need to clear out to make room for more. Fashions change, styles change, and, you know, somebody else will be very appreciative of what I'm giving. So give and it shall be given. Press down, shaken together, and running over. Take your Holy Bible, go to 1 Timothy chapter, no, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Think about that. If I am a farmer, or even if I plant a garden, when I plant a garden, I want to have enough to share with my neighbors. Hey, you want some tomato? And good God, homegrown tomato sandwiches with some cheese and some bacon or whatever you want on it. Mm -mm -mm. So good. Every, verse 7. Every man as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Just give because you love to give. And, you know, in a sense, plant in good ground. I, I one day asked God, God, I'm giving a lot. Why am I not receiving? Well, um, I wasn't planting on good grounds. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always have an all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. You shall not be without lack if you give. Givers are rich. Givers are rich because they work trading up. You know, like me, I'm going to go through my closet. I'm going to get rid, give to those that have needs. My clothing that I'm not wearing. I'm going to improve it with new clothing. You got it? Close that. I like it. So, 2 Timothy, please go there. Second Timothy. I want you to think, folks. God is a God that has rooms. And if you unlock the, if you have the key to unlock the rooms, you can see the treasures. And you can have the treasures. That's the way life is on this earth. If you have the keys, you can unlock doors that will allow you to have prosperity. Second, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly, all things to enjoy. God wants us to enjoy money. He doesn't want us to hoard money. He wants us to be smart with money. He doesn't mind us investing our money. Verse 18. That they do good. That they be rich in good works. Ready to distribute. Willing to communicate. Be willing to give. God can use you if you have money. There are things I'm doing now which... I'm not going to say, but I'm helping other people with my wealth. I'm giving back. I'm giving back. Give back, folks. 3 John 2 tells us that God wants us to prosper. Never think God wants you to be poor. Because a poor man, there's nothing wrong with him. There's very good poor people I know, and I help them. Yes, I help them. But would they choose that life if they could have a better one? No. They would want a TV. They would want a car. They would want a home. But they don't have it. You, you have it if you have it. Be thankful, folks. You got a lot. You have a whole lot. And the greatest joy in my life is 
I know what it is to be buried here and poor. I mean, North Carolina poor. Whereas no, sh no shoes, one pair of pants, one shirt, uh, going to school, kids making fun of us, my brother and I, um, going to bed hungry. So poor, poor, I know what that is. So I have empathy, not sympathy, empathy. Whereas when I see poor people, I want to help them. I want to make a difference. I want to be the change. I want to be like Jesus. Feed the poor. Feed those in need. Why? Because I know what it is not to have nothing. So my heart reaches out to them. So step up, people, please. Step up. Step up to the game of giving. Because if you step up to the game of giving, God will bless you with a more than abundant life. God bless you this day. Happy New Year. And God bless you. Be like Jesus.